Hey folks, welcome back. It's time for uh, another update, I guess, on my uh, 38 Plymouth. I don't have a whole lot of new videos lately. I haven't been doing much. I haven't done a, a, a real decent video in a long time, I don't think, but there's a lot of people watching my videos and they're asking for an update. They want more, so I appreciate that. That's awesome. Glad to see there's interest in these old cars and maybe I'm helping some folks out. Uh, last video we talked about, we took the tranny out. I got, I ordered a new, this is a synchromesh or clutch gear. I ordered a new one. It was some grinding feeling when it, when I was shifting. I wasn't happy with that. I probably had the wrong oil in there. That's part of it. I had a, I just put straight uh, modern GL5 gear oil in there and these old synchromeshes don't like that. It's almost too slippery. This part of the clutch gear has to ride on the and speed up or slow down depending on the the, uh, the speed of the transmission input shaft. It was too sli too slippery and really good. Uh, uh, what would you call it? lubricity? Lubricity maybe? Lubricity. That's a big word for me. Uh, Compound in the oil. It's so slippery. It just doesn't want to slow down to the right speed. It doesn't want to engage nicely, and it'll just chirp and grind a bit. But I see some wear in here, anyways. This part is. It's uh, 82 years old, so I ordered a new one. And I ordered it on May the 12th, and I can't believe it. Today is June the 10th. It took 28 days to get here, I can't believe it. I'm gonna blame it on COVID. I'm kind of grumpy about it, waiting four weeks for one part, but it arrived. And I think I'm gonna blame part of it on eBay's global shipping program. It's real slow. I feel for you guys in Australia, I feel for you guys in, in, in Africa, in Europe, who have these vintage Chrysler or any American car and you're waiting for parts. Holy man, I don't know how you deal with it. It's brutal waiting four weeks for parts. But, alas, we have a good looking box here from the 50s. Original Mopar part. The part number, I looked it up in my parts book, believe it or not, for my 38 Plymouth and I eBayed it and this guy had this clutch gear for sale. I'm going to buy the part number. So, it looks real good. It's brand new. It's been sitting for 60, 60 years at least. And it's factory coated and with the special grease paste they put on here. I'm going to degrease this and clean it up. It is an exact match and it feels good and it feels tight. And these surfaces in here that contact the, uh, the cone on the, on the sh transmission shaft are verdant, brand new. So I'm really excited. I'm going to get that in. I'd like to put it in right now after waiting for 28 days. But you know what? It's, it's Wednesday night. And every Wednesday, a bunch of old car guys get together at the local A&W in the parking lot. And we lean on our cars and we tell each other lies. And we have fun. And Well, I'm going to do that tonight. Uh, this, car, this transmission part is going to have to wait another day, unfortunately. And I, I probably will update... Um, Maybe with a video again later when I get this back together. But I'm taking my my Windsor out tonight. That's what I'm gonna do. It's 1953 Chrysler Windsor. So for the past four weeks, what have I been doing? Cutting grass, doing yard work, <laughs> trying to, trying to distract myself from withdrawal from driving my 38 Plymouth. Uh, I sealed up my gasket there with that spray, copper gasket spray. I'm ready to put it back together. I seal the transmission shaft up down here with um, anaerobic sealant. That means it'll seal with the without the presence of air, so that shouldn't leak anymore. That's ready to go. I rebuilt the drive shaft. It's here, ready to go. I bought a kit on uh, on, the, on a Mopar parts site right here, and I had a funny noise in my drive shaft. Actually, in my drivetrain. I didn't know where the noise was coming from. I was worried about clutch alignment. I put in new motor mounts here, talked about that in an earlier video, put in a new pilot bushing, and then you know what, after, I got this apart, there's a spring in there that keeps tension on the uh, trunnion, it sits in this area, there's a little spring in there, and darn it, if I didn't take it apart, that spring was broken. So upon deceleration, you take your foot off the gas and you're coasting to a stop, this, now the rear end is driving, this drive shaft is kind of wants to torsionally push it forward. I think it was, it was kind of knocking and banging a little bit in the, uh, in the car. And I'm hoping that solved it. I haven't driven it 
since I put it back together. Obviously because of the transmission shaft, but we're going to do that next. We're going to change that out. What else have we done? We replaced the, the window glass again. I had this out. It didn't want to wind up or down. And um, I took it all apart, lubed it up, and reinstalled it. And it seems to be working much better than it was. Still need new seals, but it's going to work. The other thing we did is we replaced, um, we completely rewired the, uh, the fog lights. This is our fog light switch here. This is aftermarket from the 60s, I think. And it grounds to the dash. When you turn it on, a little light lights up. That's your fog lights. Pull that off the ammeter. There's a fuse in behind it as well. So we did the fog lights. You see now, they're working actually, which is fantastic. Oh, what else have we done? I did some more wiring down there, cleaned up some of my, uh, those are my relays down there for my headlights. And did some work on my, my Chrysler, but at any rate, oh, I painted uh, the lettering on my, my hubcaps. Each wheel is now looking pretty sharp. Kind of happy about that. And that's today's update, I guess. So hopefully the next update will be me test driving the transmission with it back together. We'll do that soon. All right, folks. I'm off to a &W. For the cruise.